Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 28th of May 2023 and last week we saw gold and silver prices dip, the value of the dollar rise and some consternation about whether the Federal Reserve will raise rates or not on the 14th of June. Now this video is basically a repeat of our weekly update produced yesterday. So if you listen to that, no need to listen further, unless of course you want to listen to it twice. Having said that, if you haven't listened to it, then we do suggest you listen further. Let's take a look what happened. Let's also look at what we forecast will happen this coming week. First, just a quick reminder and a request. We've set up a second channel entitled Finances Do Matter and we've placed a link below. In just a couple of months, we've gained nearly 5,000 subscribers. We have over 80 videos on the channel and once we reach 10,000 subscribers, which we're targeting to achieve by around September, we will embark on interviews and live streams. So if you're one of those listening to this and who has not subscribed to Finances Do Matter, we'd be most appreciative if you would either go to the description section below or to our comment section where you will find a link to subscribe. Now going back to last week, what happened? Well, gold fell $30, falling from 1977 to $1,947. Having hit a high of 1985 and a low of 1938, that represents a fall of 1.6%, which follows a previous week's fall of a similar amount. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,578, down £14. And in euros, it closed at €1,818. That's down €14. Silver fell 52 cents, falling from 23.86 to $23.34, having hit a high of 23.94 and a low of 22.71, a fall of 2.2%. In sterling terms, it closed at £18.92, pence. that's down 28 pence on the week. And in euros, it closed at €21.81, euros. that's down 0.32 euros, or a third of a euro. The gold to silver ratio, of course, rose from 82.9 to 1 to 83.4 to 1. Now, the difference between gold's high and low was $47, and the difference between silver's high and low was $1.23. Now, this is what we said last week concerning our forecast for the, for the coming week. We anticipate gold trading between 1925 and 2025 and silver between 23 and $25, both of which did for most of the week. Uh, but silver tr did actually move into our outlier range just above $22.50 on Thursday for just a couple of hours. But broadly, both gold and silver traded within those normal trading ranges. Now, looking at other financials, Bitcoin stands at $26,701. That's down $200. Equities were mixed, even though they all gained ground on Friday. The Dow Jones closed at 33093 That's down 333 points. The S&P 500 closed at 4205 That's up 14 and the Nasdaq Composite closed at 12,975, and that's up 318 points. We've seen the Nasdaq gain some considerable ground in recent weeks. Oils were marginally high, unfortunately, for the second week. Brent crude closed at 76.95, that's up $1.37, and WTI crude closed at 72.67, that's up $1.12. What's perhaps most pertinent, poignant, and important for Precious metal prices, the dollar index, was up 1.01 points on the week at 104.20. That's now a rise of three points over the past three weeks. Now, looking at economic data announced last week, we saw flash manufacturing and services PMIs for May actually beating forecasts. Quarter one GDP was also revised at 1.3% compared with 1.1% previously forecast. And on Friday, an important day, we saw the core PCE index, and in other words, another word for inflation, come in at 0.4% against expectations of 0.3% for April. 
meaning that the core PCE year over year has actually gone up from 4.6% to 47 So much for interest rate rises. Not something the Fed wanted to see. Interestingly too though, consumer sentiment for May rose from 57.7 to 59.2. What was a little surprising is that in spite of the higher than expected inflation rate and the dollar index rising, both gold and silver recaptured a little of their losses on Friday, when normally one would have expected them to continue their decline. It's possible the market felt that the falls that had preceded Friday had been a little overdone at that stage. Now this coming week we have nothing on Monday because of Memorial Day. Our best wishes to all our US listeners and subscribers on that day. Tuesday, consumer confidence figures for May. Wednesday, ADP employment report. Note that one, it's important. Thursday, we have final manufacturing PMIs for May. And then on Friday, we have the US employment report and unemployment rate for May. This will be the last jobs report before the FOMC meets and decides on its interest rate decision on the 14th of June. So some quite important data next week. Now Friday's PCE rise and a 0.8% rise in consumer spending in April seems to suggest that inflation is still entrenched in the US economy. We have always maintained that we must see interest rates at about 5.5% in order for it to have the desired effect on inflation. But who are we when the Fed has such wonderful economists? Now, immediately after the PC report was released, the CME's FedWatch tool quickly rose to a 70.5% chance that the Fed will raise rates by a quarter percent at the June FOMC meeting. A far cry indeed from recent statements by Chairman Jerome Powell at a Fed meeting in May, where he stated that he the central bank's terminal rate had become elevated to a point where its effect on consumers and businesses is high enough to restrain borrowing spending and contracting economic growth, indicating a pause in the rise of interest rates. We shall see. Now we're continuing to see a downward pressure on gold and technical analysts who felt that perhaps the latest pullback was close to the bottom are now suggesting that we could even see gold dip further to around $1,915. Much depends on what the Fed does on the 14th of June. Sorry for keep repeating that. If interest rates are paused, we could very well see another hike up in gold. If, of course, they're not paused, then our view is that $1,900 probably won't hold and 1875 could provide a good buying opportunity. To the upside, the general consensus is that 1965 represents the next resistance level with, of course, 2000 being the ultimate, at least for the next month or so. Now, silver took quite a hit last week, but did manage to close reasonably above $23 as buyers came in when it fell below $22.75. There is quite a positive demand for silver. However, we are entering an economic recession or slowdown that will not all go well for this precious metal. The ultimate downside is $20 as far as technical analysts are concerned and the ultimate upside moving through the summer months could be 26 with most trading in our view generally moving between 21 and 26 So where do we believe these precious metals will go this coming week? Well, much of course depends upon the jobs data. Friday's minor recovery in prices augurs well for the opening this coming week but there again, we aren't convinced the markets have taken into account the PCE data adequately enough. If the jobs data is also strong, then the likelihood of an interest rate rise on the 14th is strengthened. And that will not be good for gold and silver. But it's two weeks or so before we reach that point. So for this coming week, we anticipate gold really to meander between $1,900 and $2,000. Perhaps even be a little boring until the jobs figures on Friday, with 1890 and 2025 as outliers. And we expect silver to broadly trade between 2250 and 2450, with 22 to 25 as outliers. Of course, we're not taking into account particularly any geopolitical events, as at the moment we're not seeing any major instance on the horizon. 
What do you think? Please do share your thoughts. Let us know which direction you believe gold and silver prices are moving in over the next week or so. Uh, before we go, just a reminder again, and that we've placed a link in our description box below for Finances Do Matter channel. We have had one or two people write and ask us, uh, should we now move over to Finances Do Matter and ignore Illuminati Silver? We suggest not, because we will very shortly be revamping Illuminati Silver to take more account of gold and silver and precious metals and less account of the economic data. So the economic data and general investment, whether that includes shares, cryptocurrencies, bonds, as well as precious metals, will be covered by Finances Do Matter and Illuminati Silver will focus more specifically on precious metals. So please stay tuned to both, subscribe to both, comment on both and hopefully give both a thumbs up. Thank you for listening. Have a great weekend, a safe weekend and a prosperous week ahead.